What's up, guys? You can check out our podcast, articles, or our full proxy gallery all at our brand new website, www.itresolvesmtg.com. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Crack a Pack series. Uh, before we get into this one, I just want to mention uh, I do apologize. I know we were supposed to have an episode up on both Monday and Tuesday. Uh, unfortunately, I've been sick uh, for most of the week. Uh, so, this is actually the first chance I've really been able to record uh, outside of the podcast. So, I do apologize to you guys. Uh, we are back on track, though. Uh, and so, I'm very excited to be opening up a pack of Gate Crash today. Not the most exciting set in the world, if I'm going to be honest, but there are still quite a number of, in my opinion, really exciting cards in this set. Uh, they may not be the highest value in the world, but they are really, really fun. Um, the The whole theme behind this set was multicolor. Uh, this was the Return to Ravnica block, uh, and this was, I believe, the second or... Uh, no, actually, I'm sorry, this was the third installment in that block. Uh, it was Return to Ravnica... Uh, Dragon's Maze, and then Gate Crash. So really, really awesome stuff, really fun multicolor strategies. Uh, and so we'll keep that in mind um, as we go through and figure out what our draft pick is actually going to be uh, as we go through this pack. So our first card here is Cloudfin Raptor. It's one blue for a zero one with flying. Uh, it does feature Evolve, which is the Simic mechanic. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, that's blue and green. Uh, and so whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if that creature has a power or toughness greater than this creature, you put a 1-1 counter on this creature. So Evolve is actually a really interesting mechanic. It kind of gives value to your low drops, uh, which is really, really nice. And this is a very, very good example of one of the best low drop Evolve creatures, I think, in the set. Uh, this and like Experiment 1 are really the big ones, uh, in my opinion. So I actually really like this one, though, because of the flying. It's evasive. Uh, it's able to get in for a little bit of extra damage, hopefully, because of that. Uh, and so not a bad start to the pack. It's not an amazing card by any means, but it does work really, really well, uh, assuming you're able to power out just more and more really strong creatures. So I definitely like this. Eventually, it does demand kind of an answer, uh, whether that be an onboard threat or a removal spell of some kind. So definitely a strong first pickup. Uh, won't say that this is going to be the first pick for sure, but uh, definitely a nice one. Uh, Predator's Rapport. Uh, is an instant for two and a green. Uh, choose target creature you control. You gain life equal to that creature's power plus its toughness. So uh, this is very much your standard just gain life card. Uh, very green focused, obviously, based on the power and toughness thing. Uh, instant speed is nice, but I really hate cards like this, uh, if I'm going to be honest. I just, I never find them to be very useful. Uh, yes, it stalls a little bit, uh, gains you maybe a turn or two, but... That's kind of it. Uh, it's not really doing anything to further your own game plan. Uh, and so I generally find them to be quite bad. So not much to say here other than I just think this is a bad card. Honestly, uh, I don't think you should ever really play this uh, unless you find yourself up in a really, really aggro heavy matchup. Maybe very, very strong. Maybe uh, you could consider it. But other than that, definitely not worth it. Uh, Contaminated Ground uh, is one and a black for an enchant land. Uh, the enchanted land is a swamp, and when it becomes tapped, its controller loses two life. Uh, so really interesting card. Um, kind of sets your opponent back a little bit. Obviously, the idea here uh, is you enchant one of your opponent's lands. It becomes a swamp, which may or may not really hurt them uh, in terms of mana fixing. Uh, so obviously, this is a multicolor format, so generally speaking, you'll, you'll have plays uh, outside of that, but... Uh, this can certainly put a damper on some of the things that they could play. Uh, and obviously, if it does become tapped, they lose a couple life. So it's interesting. I don't super love this card. I think it's a little bit too easy to kind of play around uh, because you can very easily just say, well, I'm not going to tap this land ever uh, or only tap it when you really, really need to. Uh, now, obviously, that in itself is a setback. Uh, but generally speaking, you're you're going to find a way to play around this. So I don't love this, honestly. Uh, definitely not more than the Cloudfin Raptor. Uh, Scorchwalker. 
uh, is three and a red for a five one. Uh, and it does feature the gruel blood rush mechanic, which I think is cool. Gruel is uh, the green and red uh tribe basically uh but it's one and two red a uh, discard this card and target attacking creature gets plus five plus one until the end of the turn so uh basically what was really nice about this is it encourages that aggression really really well uh it basically just says you know you can use your creatures as combat tricks if you want uh which is really sweet it it, it enables some really really aggressive plays uh, and for only three mana you're getting a five one buff which is pretty huge uh, especially for something that's either unblocked or dealing with a much stronger creature. So uh, what's nice about this, it gives you a little bit of flexibility uh, because either you can play the creature, which is a 5-1 for 4, which is not amazing if I'm going to be honest. Uh, pretty high on the power ratio, but the toughness just means it's going to die pretty quick. Uh, but you can also just use this, save it as a combat trick, use it when you really need to, uh, maybe even to close out the game. So I do like this card. I gotta be honest. I don't know if I like it more than the Cloudfin Raptor. Uh, the Raptor is much more of a long-term investment. Uh, whereas the Scorchwalker, I think is just better, uh, kind of flexibility wise. Uh, I think because of that, maybe I go Scorchwalker over the Cloudfin Raptor. Uh, but both are actually very, very strong. I'm, I think I'm going to keep them together for now. We'll see what we get in the rest of the pack. Uh, Martial Glory uh, is a red and a white for an instant. And target creature gets plus three, plus zero until the end of the turn. And then target creature gets plus zero, plus three until the end of the turn. Uh, worth noting that these can be the same creature. They, there is no text saying that they can't be. So you can technically just give a plus three, plus three buff. Uh, what I don't like about that is if you kind of put that into perspective, uh, that's a giant growth, uh, essentially. Granted, you can split it up, which is important, uh, but that's a 3-3 three, three buff uh, for two mana of two different colors where you could technically just get that for one green. Uh, so I don't love that. Um, it does obviously split it up, which is nice. That's the flexibility of this card. And so uh, it is a nice combat trick. Uh, I got to say, I don't like it more than the other cards that we have so far. Uh, the ideal situation is you buff something's power to trade it off uh, or just straight up eat something. Uh, and then you buff something else's toughness to make, it, make sure it survives and can kill off something else. So it, it definitely has its uses, but that's the ideal scenario. Uh, it is in the Boros colors, so you're going to have a lot of creatures to target with this, which is great. Uh, but I definitely want to be a little more established in that deck before taking something like this. Uh, Furious Resistance is one red for an instant. Target blocking creature gets plus three plus zero and gains first strike until the end of the turn. Uh, this is actually a really powerful combat trick. I just want to point out plus three plus zero plus first strike is really, really good. That just means it's probably going to eat literally anything, uh, depending on obviously what you're tagging it onto. But that first strike is really, really key because it means it's going to deal its damage first uh, and be able to hopefully take down whatever it's up against. Uh, the downside here is that it does have to be blocking, which means you're probably in not necessarily a losing position, but you're probably not in the aggressive position uh, on the onset. So you really have to be careful as far as timing with a card like this as to if it's actually going to be good or not. Uh, it's going to be able to deal with something, and that's really, really important, but you are going to have to play kind of a defensive role to make it worthwhile. So I don't love it. I think we've got much more uh, just stronger options on the onset. Uh, but not a terrible card to consider, I think, later on in the pack. Uh, Forced Adaptation is an enchant creature for one green. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a 1-1 counter on the enchanted creature. Uh, this is a really interesting card, I think. Uh, I normally don't like enchanted creatures. I honestly don't think that this is amazing, uh, but it does give very, very good long-term inevitability. Uh, and we talk about inevitability and in, in magic as something that's really, really important, and it is. Uh, it's nice to be able to say, you know, if you don't deal with this card, we will just win the game. Uh, it's, it's great to say that, but it's very easy to deal with this. Uh, removal spell is going to take care of the creature that you, you tag this onto, uh, and so it's a little bit too vulnerable to make uh, that inevitability clause worthwhile. Uh, that being said, there are certainly some really interesting things you can do, and especially the Simic Guild with the 1-1 counters. Uh, and so there might be a time that this is worth it, but it's definitely not a first pick in my opinion. Uh, and I really tend to shy away from enchant creatures anyway. Uh, most of you guys know that. So I don't love this card. Uh, I think, again, we've just got better options right now. 
Uh, Millennial Gargoyle is a 2-2 with flying for four of any color. Uh, this is not a very, very strong card, in my opinion. It's a 2-2 with flying. That's great, uh, but it does cost four. That's a little high. The upside with a card like this is that it is playable in any deck, uh, and so these cards tend to be in here. We see cards like this a lot, actually, in a lot of sets, where they kind of just go into any deck, uh, and they technically are fine, but they're not amazing. Uh, and so cards like this really serve the purpose of if you find yourself short on playables, play something like this just because you can. Uh, and I don't love cards like this. I tend to shy away from them unless I just absolutely have to pick them. Uh, and we're certainly not in that position here. So definitely not interested in this. Uh, Shielded Passage is one white for an instant. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to target creature this turn. Uh, this is very similar to the life gain card in that it just stalls the game uh, in a way that I do not enjoy. I don't think that it is worth it at all to play this. Uh, it's nice to be able to protect your creature, no problem there, but it doesn't actually get you further in the game. Uh, and for that reason, I just tend to shy away from cards like this. It's nice that it's only one mana, it's flexible, it's instant speed, but just not very good. Uh, unfortunately, these cards just tend not to get played in limited and for very good reason. <laughs> Uh, our first uh, uncommon is Elusive Crisis. It's one, a green, and a blue for a 0-4. Uh, it is unblockable, and it does also feature Evolve, which is really the, the key behind this. So for only 3 mana, you are getting a 0-4. Obviously, doesn't do much on the onset, but is unblockable. And because anything that you play is going to have more power than this card, uh, generally speaking, you can get at least one or two counters on this pretty quickly. And then ideally be able to start swinging in uh, for for unblockable damage, which is great. Uh, so I honestly think this is probably the best card that we have so far. Uh, unblockable is really, really uh, key in limited because no matter what the board state, you're going to be able to hopefully get in for a good bit of damage. And that's really, really important. Uh, it just makes sure that those board stall positions are always going to be in your favor. And I think uh, regardless of you know what deck you're playing, where you're playing it, that's always something that you should be looking for is how to break up a board stall. So this is a great way to do it. Uh, Tower Defense uh, is an instant for one and a green. Creatures you control get plus zero, plus five, and gain reach until the end of the turn. Uh, this is a really interesting one. Normally, I don't love cards like this that just give a toughness buff, but the important thing here is that it gives a reach as well. Uh, which means it's going to be able to deal with flyers uh, where you may not be able to on the onset. Uh, and green tends to have a little bit of a tr a little bit of a tough time dealing with flyers uh, because it it gets spiders, which are kind of the key thing to be able to deal with them. But that's about it. Uh, and so it's nice to be able to give some of your really really strong creatures, which you normally would get in green, a little bit of extra uh, utility and be able to block those like blue white flyer style decks. And so. I, I don't hate this card. Uh, it's still not my favorite, if I'm honest. You're really looking for that situation where your opponent attacks in with a bunch of like cheap flyers, uh, and then you flash or you instant speed this out, excuse me, and are able to deal with all of them at once. And that's an amazing feeling, but that's living the dream, and that tends not to work all the time. So I don't love it, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, I definitely think the Crisis is a better option. Uh, ground Assault is red and a green for a sorcery, and it deals damage to target creature equal to the number of lands that you control. Uh, this is just really solid removal, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, it is sorcery speed, so a little bit less flexible than uh, something that we could play at instant speed, obviously. Uh, but uh, you're going to be playing lands anyway, and so this kind of scales uh, as you get further and further into the game and can deal with more and more creatures. So I actually really like this card. I kind of think this is... Up there, if not better than the Elusive Crisis, I don't know 100%. Uh, we'll see what our rare is, but I, removal is very, very key uh, to any draft. You always want at least you know some number of removal pieces in your deck just to be able to deal with whatever the opponent's doing. Because this scales with as many lands as you're going to be able to play, it's really, really good at dealing with basically anything. Uh, and so I actually really, really like this card. I gotta say, I think it's better than the Crisis. I think I'm gonna switch it out here, but we will, of course, see what our rare is, which is uh, Molten Primordial, uh, which is five and two red for a six four uh, with haste. Uh, and when it enters the battlefield for each opponent, gain control of up to one target creature that player controls until the end of the turn. 
untap those creatures and they gain haste until the end of the turn gotta say this kind of has to be the pick uh just because <clears throat> excuse me uh not only is it a big swinging bomb uh which is really really nice it also can swing the turn it comes out which is great it's only one color which means you're a little bit more flex flexible into what you could actually uh start playing as far as the rest of your deck goes you don't you're not necessarily set into gruel or anything like that uh, and you also get extra damage from the creature that you get to steal from the opponent. So there's a lot of upside to a card like this. I have to say this is just basically you're, you're like, it's, it's the, the quintessential bomb that you're looking for. Uh, and so it's definitely very, very good. It's an expensive bomb for sure at seven mana, but generally speaking, you're going to be able to get there. I think, uh, especially limited, you, you tend to have a little bit of a slower game. So I like this a lot. I definitely think it's the pick. We do have a foil here. Uh, which is Righteous Charge. Uh, it's a sorcery for one and two white. Creatures you control get plus two, plus two until the end of the turn. Uh, actually, not a bad card, I would say. Uh, in a Boros-style deck, you're going to be going wide very, very easily. Uh, Boros is obviously a very supported uh, uh, excuse me, archetype uh, in this block uh, in general, and so you're going to have the option of going wide. I definitely think if you find yourself in that deck, this is a great card to pick up. I don't think it's worth picking up first. You want to be established in that deck, generally speaking, first. So, uh, very, very good card. Definitely not the pick here, though. Our Swamp and our Knight token. I think it's a very easy Molten Primordial. Uh, some other good cards, some good options for sure, but that's just, it's it's the bomb. That's what you're looking for. So, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that... I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.